What does a retired NASA engineer do in his spare time? Well, for Lou Yulian, it's creating a world far, far away from the void of space. It's a world filled with trains and trees. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Merritt Island, Florida. For some, it's the place to get a fantastic view of shuttles taking off from the Kennedy Space Center nearby. For others, it's a place to spot rare birds taking off for their yearly migration. It's certainly a nature lover's paradise. With such an abundance of tropical foliage in the area, it's a little bit surprising to see what's inside this house. When you step into Lou Yulian's train room, you enter an entirely different ecosystem. You're instantly transported into the world of Pacific Northwestern logging in 1925. It's just about as far from Florida as you can get without leaving the continental United States. Set in Oregon's Cascade Mountains, Lou's Coon Creek Lumber Company layout is a narrow gauge logging railroad in ON3. Lou has always been intrigued with the logging industry's geared engines. I saw a picture of a Shea geared locomotive and it intrigued me. Lopsided boiler, gears, vertical boilers, Shea. I got interested in geared engines. Geared engines are used in the woods. So from that, I got interested in logging. And logging took place out in Oregon, Washington, California. You know, it's from Florida. I, I enjoyed the logging. Lou used both standard and narrow gauge track so people could see the difference between them. Lou has worked with several modeling friends over the years to complete the layout. The backgrounds include photographs of the Rocky Mountains taken by both Lou and his friend Mike Brock. Mike and Lou have been friends for almost 30 years, and they've helped each other on their layouts. It was Mike who came up with the idea to make the layout viewable from several angles, just the way prototype trains are. From the railroad's base in the small town of Stillwater, a single narrow gauge track zigzags up the steep grades into the mountains. Halfway up, there's a yard where the lumber company's shays and climaxes carry loaded log cars to the mill. A mountain layout wouldn't be realistic without plenty of bridges, and this one is no exception. There's a low timber trestle, a big timber trestle, and several cribbed log bridges. The largest trestle at six feet high, three feet long, would be 150 feet tall and 600 feet long. Built by Ted Norcross, more than 3,000 Grantline nut bolt washer castings were used in this trestle alone. The Coon Creek Sawmill is modeled after a real mill and took Lou's friend, Mark Hankins, over four years to complete. Although he works on the layout almost every day, running it has never been a top priority for Lou. What really excites him is the scenery, especially the trees. And the trees are everywhere. They are by far the most labor-intensive part of this layout. Some of them tower above the trains, and would be over 200 feet tall in real life. Lou makes them by tapering a piece of balsa wood with a wood rasp. He then stains them and drills holes for English sea fern from tree kits. One particular tree here is called the spar tree, which is a very large tree used by the logging industry as a type of crane. Rigged as a haystack boom loader to load logs onto cars, the spar tree is 100 scale feet tall. While Lou is referred to as the tree guy, Mike is called the dirt guy. For the sake of realism, Mike actually brought some dirt in from Wyoming and North Carolina. The layout's realism is stunning. From the color of the soil to the smallest tree branches, this layout is a tribute to logging railroads. The Coon Creek Lumber Company layout's realism doesn't stop with the way it looks. Lou has also added recorded sounds to enhance the overall experience. While all of the ON3 locomotives are equipped with sound systems, Lou also has his own recordings of geared locomotive noises. Speakers and tape recorders are tucked under the layout where Lou can operate them. When you leave Lou's train room, you leave an entire world. Upon returning to the sounds of palm trees rustling in the breeze and the bright light of the Florida sun, you can't help but wonder if there's a tree guy somewhere up in the Pacific Northwest who just can't get enough palm trees into his layout.